Hey everyone, welcome to the Withering Effect, episode 146. Today's date is June 5th, 2022, and I am Duds, or Duds Versus, known to the rest of the interwebs. And I'm Jimbo, you may know me as Jimbo Slice 23 What have you been up to this week, Duds? <laughs> still being sick. You're still sick? I'm still sick. It's been like a month. So, physically, I feel okay. Like, I'm, I don't have a lot of energy still, but, like, I don't have body aches, I don't have fevers or anything like that. I'm still coughing. Everyone at work gives me the same thing. How are you still sick two weeks later? And it's like, well, because everyone else has decided to take random vacations or take time off. I physically haven't had a chance to take time off. So I've worked while being sick. I I don't have any rest. And then I come home and, hey, guess what? You have two days on the weekend. Oh, I got to do all the housework. Mow the yard, wash the car weeds kill snakes somehow that's become a thing again i've got so many snakes in my yard it's not even funny oh yeah that's not funny dude i was taking out the trash and one was under my trash can hmm. no bueno man no bueno yeah other than being sick i did finally finally put out an episode after what was like three or four weeks yeah so yeah people can see the black and white noir uh intro that i had worked a long time on i, I was super excited about that one yeah, I like that intro. So, like, some of the little things where the recording messed up and the the rain you hear and the recording is not Minecraft rain. That's a rain sound clip mm. that I brought in and I had to overlay and splice to make it the correct length. <laughs> so, stuff like that I was pretty happy with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, Casey's part got messed up, so he just randomly re-recorded some lines and i was able to splice that in did you have like the uh surround or game sounds off so not a windows update but an obs update messed up my settings really yep i usually won't do an update with obs in the middle of an episode but since i was just starting an episode i was like yeah go ahead and do the update and i didn't double check because it's been a while since it's messed up settings like that Mm-hmm. And uh turns out it did mess them up. Did that to me recently too. Had to configure configure some stuff. Yeah, that's not cool. It's like just the littlest thing will throw your audio off or what you plan on recording off. Well, the fact that everything keeps jumping back to default, mm-hmm. which I don't understand because default on my Windows is what it should be anyways. Because like I have default set up as my headphones. So it's defaulting to a blank, whatever it is, a blank format, because there's nothing there, because default on Windows is my headphones. Hmm, that is weird. Yeah. But yeah, I built a treehouse for some clerics, which which is a fun build. Mm-hmm. I had to, I struggled with it a bit just because of being sick, not having the energy. I could really only work on it for a little bit every other day. Work's been running me ragged. Because people are on vacation and stuff, on top of me being sick, we're also shorthanded. Mm. So I'm doing a lot more work at the same time. So I'm getting getting worn out, rung through the ringer. But I come home pretty tired. I don't always get to work on stuff. I did like the ceiling. I used some of that ceiling design last season. Oh yeah, right? But the cauldron ceiling, can't get wrong with it. I totally forgot about a cauldron ceiling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just going to go more smithing table. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hang on, isn't this a thing? And sure enough, it was. It still looks good. Still looks good. Uh, was it? Oh, I worked on more waterways in my base. Mm-hmm. I made another little pond, and I think it looks really good. And it differentiates itself a bit from the one on the right. I say that that's just the first one I built. The only problem is I need to get some fish to put in it. All I have is salmon in there now. Yeah, I need some tropical fish. Something different. Yeah, something different. Maybe frogs? Maybe. Eventually. Maybe frogs would work really well in my area. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of it. I I was planning on streaming this weekend, but I got wrapped up with doing so much stuff that uh, I didn't. So, yay. How about you? Because you've had an eventful week. Yeah, before I start my story time, I want to say I haven't played Minecraft in like almost a month now. Since I started my new job, I've been pretty busy. Mm-hmm. I had two days off since starting. It's been almost three weeks now. But uh, this week, our internet went out. So 
well, I guess last week uh, recording on uh, Sunday, but our internet went out, and when we recorded last time, my internet kept popping out, Mm -hmm. and uh, it would do that here and there throughout the day, and you know, it started doing it while recording the podcast, and I was getting kind of frustrated with it. Well, eventually, internet just went out. We called Comcast and couldn't get a signal to our box. So we ordered, uh, or yeah, we ordered a technician to come to the house and look at it, or they scheduled a technician. The day of the technician to come and change our box or look at our wiring, my house caught on fire. It caught on fire right on the Comcast cable. So I'm thinking, at least I'm, I'm pretty sure now it was the, that's what was doing it. That's why I wasn't getting the signal. That's why the internet was cutting out this wire. It didn't have a good ground to it, Mm -hmm. is what I was told. Even the fire company told me that's the wire that started the fire. So it was this Comcast wire, but apparently it was the grounding to it. So it's not technically on on Comcast, but luckily enough, I have homeowner's insurance. Everything's going to be paid for. It wasn't a lot of damage. My wife was able to catch the fire as before before it really started up but it did uh i do have a little hole in the wall a bunch of burnt siding the fire department had to kick one of the walls in just to make sure they got the whole fire and mm. sprayed all that so uh there is some damage but it could have been a lot worse apparently they came in like three minutes once we called them which is pretty impressive dang you usually don't see that that fast mm-hmm yeah, every, everything was taken care of. And uh, so check this out. During the fire, my wife was telling me our neighbor out back of our house, or she lives behind us, behind the alley. She's a real nosy neighbor. And uh, she started cutting our grass during this fire, right? <laughs> not her grass, your grass. My grass, yes. Not her grass, my grass. She's never cut my grass before. My grass wasn't even that high. I cut it last week. So she starts cutting our grass. I know that's the first thing I noticed when I got home. Did someone cut our grass? You know, it's like it's just weird. It's never happened. And uh, my wife continued to tell me that our neighbor started cutting our grass during this fire because she's so nosy. She wanted to see what was going on. Like no one noticed her cutting the grass. You know, it's like, lady, what are you doing? Even the cops are like, hey, lady, you can't be here right now. We're trying to put out a fire. She was like in the way. It's right where the fire was. (laughs) <laughs> where she was cutting this grass. And I think about it, it's just so ridiculous. But w- w- the funny thing is, she didn't even finish the grass. I should have knocked on the door and said, hey, you you missed a spot <laughs> on my grass. You got to come finish this. But uh, the other funny part is when I got home, after noticing and uh, noticing that AEP's out there, they're running a new wire to my house and everything. And we're trying to get everything figured out of how, you know, how we're going to fix all this. And I noticed our neighbor, on the other side of our house, pulling weeds down from the neighbor next door to me. I'm like, are you kidding me? There she is. She's pulling weeds off of the house. And uh, so I just like let her go. It's like poison ivy was growing up the side of my house from my neighbor's yard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just let her go, you know, whatever. If she wants to do it, that's less work for me to do. That's the way I saw it at the time. And then I noticed today when we got our internet on today, I'm not getting internet in my office. What is going on? How come I don't have internet, but the rest of the house does? When she was pulling down these weeds, she ripped my wire out that I fed up my house into my office. And uh, yeah, she ripped it right out. Like she didn't even take it off the thread. She just ripped <laughs> the co- she ripped the copper right out. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me! Like just one thing after another. But I finally, I'm finally in my office. I'm on my computer. I got the internet. I had to rig it up, but it works fine. We shouldn't have any issues of disconnecting, and we shouldn't have any fire issues. Hopefully, so hopefully all that stuff's being fixed. Yep, and uh, insurance is covering everything, even the food that was in the fridge that had to sit there for a couple days. Nice. Yeah, happy about that. You know, I mean, it's a minor setback, but I'm still here. Yeah. Still working and still doing the podcast. Just got to get back to Minecraft. That's the plan this week. Nice. That's my story time, though. It was a good story, <laughs> though. Figure I'd share it. Yeah, definitely a good story. <laughs> Especially because, like, what was it? It was just, like, randomly, was it Friday or Saturday? You're like, yeah, uh, my house caught on fire? <laughs> yeah. 
And that was like a day and a half after it caught on fire. No. I was like, do I tell these guys? I should probably mention it. Yeah, because I didn't think about it till like late last night that because you didn't get internet till today. And it was like middle of the day when you finally got it. I was like, mm -hmm. should I be like looking for a guest to do the show? And then Carl said, well, if you couldn't do it, he would join in. Mm -hmm. Right. But if Carl's doing it, I have to record it in an earlier time because it's basically past midnight for him right now. Yeah, the only thing, the, my only issue was if, if they couldn't fix that wire, I wasn't getting internet tonight, but they were able to fix it, yeah. which is, I mean, they should, you know, the technician should be able to do that, so mm -hmm. I was confident in it, but if something happened to where they couldn't fix it, then Carl would have had to fill in, but I'm here. Awesome. Well, should we head into the news? Yeah, big news, not. <laughs> I was like, Jimbo, you had more news than Minecraft did. I did. Yeah. So pre-release two, or not pre-release two, but uh, release candidate two. Yes, is out, and it fixes a bug that causes a crash. What is that bug? I don't know. They didn't list it, <laughs> but there's a bug that causes a crash unless you have pre-release two. Mm -hmm. Normal to all the other release candidates, you know. Yeah. Bug fixes, crash fixes. Yeah. Usually, when a release candidate comes out, the only time that there's a second or a third candidate if there's a major bug i mean that you know that sprint bug still out there but whatever mm -hmm. by the time you guys are listening to this it's going to be released it comes out the seventh um let's see the other news is we've talked about this before but carl wanted to make sure that uh we mentioned again and i and i remember talking about this but i think come the seventh when 119 comes out if you have the java edition you can get the bedrock edition if you have the Bedrock Edition, you can get the Java Edition for free. Yep, they come together. They come together. That's cool. I don't know if that means I'll be able to download Minecraft on the Switch and play it, though. I don't know. Kind of doubtful. You would think if you signed in... You would think. ...with a, you know, a certain account, you should be able to see how that works exactly. Just to clarify here in editing that it is for the Java and Bedrock Editions for PC only so it doesn't cover consoles or mobile so if you buy java edition for pc mac or linux you'll get the windows 10 windows 11 and windows version of bedrock for free and vice versa it doesn't apply to the console editions but then again not really much of a bedrock guy. i did want to check out the rtx but I, I never got an rtx graphics card and i heard that's dead like i heard they got rid of that really what the heck yeah huh well I got to play a little bit of... That was the only time I played Bedrock. It was when they had the RTX release. And I I enjoyed it. I loved the graphics. Though, it seems like the shaders in Java are, are getting there too. You know, I, I've seen some really nice shaders. The shaders in Java are really making leaps and bounds. Yes. So, they're a little more costly. But, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed the RTX for Bedrock. Our buddy, uh, Peepwarp, they have a shader pack that I'm going to have to yoink from them that's really good. And it's it just adds outdoor shaders, not indoor. It affects water and I think some leaves and stuff. I don't know. It's not overwhelming, mm. which is my thing. Shaders to me can be sometimes be so overwhelming. It takes away from a build. But these are just like complimentary shaders, as I'd call it. And it, it's really nice. Yeah, every time I put the shaders on, it's like a different game. Yeah. You know, if you want a different experience. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of it for the news. It was a slow, slow news week. Yeah, just bug fix. I expect next week to be a slow news week, news week also, unless there's a lot of bugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm real curious of the feedback from the Minecraft community, too, once they're able to mm -hmm. play the full release. Same. No, and I don't think uh, Ripple Effect's updating right away. I think we're waiting till all of our Optifine, Replay Mod, all that stuff gets updated. I'm okay with that. I am too. Uh, we've been in this world for a little bit. I'm not in any rush to just update to update sakes. Yeah, same here. Let's hop into some listener comments. I've got one over here from Term. They ask, or say, hello, Duds and Jimbo. Hello. Hey. Have you heard of Lightmatica before? I have personally. I think it's a great tool to use if you have a if you have to build a huge or repetitive build. 
I've never used it myself, but I'm looking to get into it. What are your thoughts on Limatica? I can start here. I've never used it, <laughs> but I've definitely looked into it. My whole problem is when I build something, I normally change something. And Lightmatica is looking for a certain block for you to place. You know, it's like a copy paste system. Yes. And uh, I, I've been using creative mode lately, and it's nice to have that, you know, brought to the world. And not like physically there, but, you know, just a, a template to where you can put your blocks. Mm -hmm. It is, it's very nice, it, especially if you want to do a time lapse. I was able to do my time lapse without it, but I changed some things. You know, I, I didn't use all the blocks that I wanted to in my original build because I I always do that. It's something I do. And uh, that's the only reason why I haven't used it yet. But I, I highly recommend it if uh, if you have a really big build in mind. Well, it's not even that, so much that, as me and Carl used it for Ripple Effect Season 3 to build the tree farm. Farms too, yeah. And and that one was pretty pretty good. Light Matica sometimes can confuse me, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, there are times where I'm like, I should have done this in Light Matica, but I'm, I'm, I'm not a very good creative player either. So like I try to do some builds in creative. Most of the time, it's just kind of outlining what a build's going to be. Mm -hmm. I, I don't ever get it past like the 33% completion before uh, I finish it. Rare instances being the wandering trader shot from last season on Ripple. I think that got all the way to like 95% done before I brought it over. But I'm very much a survival builder. I like going up, placing a couple blocks, and then stepping back and look at it and going up, placing some more blocks. It's just kind of how I do it. Yeah, and my, uh, when I was doing my Heavenly Palace, that's what I've been calling it, Heavenly Palace, on my walls at the bottom, I'd made different type of walls just to see which ones I liked the best. So it wouldn't have been ideal to bring that over to Light Manica. And like you, like you said, I didn't finish the whole build itself. I finished like half of it. Yeah. I knew I could duplicate half and put it on the other side. It's just, I don't know, it's so much building. If you have to build something, the whole thing in creative, you know, then copy paste it over there and build it again. So exactly. I try to shortcut it in creative and build it all the way in survival. I think we've got the same, same thoughts on that. I never thought about using it for redstone though. That is a good idea. It really does help. Yeah, normally you're, it's just verbatim of how it's built. You know, you're doing the tutorial. So, And another big thing is with doing redstone builds, you have to make sure everything fits inside the place you want it. So like Matica will let you know. Mm -hmm. We got one more question if you'd like to go ahead and read it. Yeah, it's by uh, Buddha Miner. That'd be right. I want to say Buddha Miner. I am not sure. <laughs> I just B-U-A-D-A-A-M-I-N-O-R. Yeah, Buddha or Bupa Miner. I would like to expand on my question, they say. What do you think about a forest or and fossil update? Forest referring to birch forest getting update, maybe with new structures, fossil being archaeology and possibly new temple types and new villages. And they also expand on the question, would you also like to see an update revamp certain biomes like the mesa and desert? Another portion of the question. So the forest could refer to a biomes update and fossils could refer to structures that are abandoned and more temple types. There's kind of two two questions here, I guess. I would like to mention that I thought we were getting more biomes updated this update. I can definitely see just by the concept art that, you know, that they are looking at update updating the birch forest. Hopefully more forests get updated. You know, more ambience, I guess you could say. Yeah. We know there's an archaeology update being looked at, hopefully in the future. Actually, they mentioned it would be coming in the future. It's just not time yet. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we kind of expected these. I didn't realize this before I came up with our topic. But basically answering this question is going to answer the topic. So <laughs> it's like, talk about the topic here or wait till the end. Well, I mean, you could mention the topic, but not spoil your thing, or would it spoil? It, it would spoil it all. Hmm. So I say let's just relook at this question after mending Minecraft. I think I know what your update is going to be. I think I know. Yeah. The topic is early predictions for 120, or way too early predictions for 120. Mm hmm Pretty early, because technically 119 isn't out. <laughs> exactly. But 
Thank you guys for those questions. Those comments were from our Discord, and it's the only place where you can talk to everyone who works on the show easily. Just take me Jason's word for it. Hey friends, it's me, Jason, and I'm a member of the Withering Effect Discord. It's a great place to talk to your fellow listeners and give your input into the show. You might even get your question or comment read out on a future episode. Join the Discord today. Link is in the show notes, and I'll see you there. Duds 100%s this message. Thank you for the Discord ad, me, Jason. And speaking of the Discord, it's the only place you can get involved in our Mending Minecraft vote. This week, we asked you to choose between one of three mobs for us to discuss and improve. Your choices were a mule, Fletcher, Mushroom. And the winner of Mending Minecraft this week is... The Mule. Yup. 26 votes. Fletcher with 10, Mushroom with 11. So congratulations, Mule. 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 <laughs> mule. <laughs> uh, before we get started, a few things on the mule. Mules are infertile offspring of horses and donkeys that, when tame, can be ridden and equipped with chest. Mules do not spawn naturally and can't cannot be bred with other mules. Upon death, mules drop zero to five leather, depending on the looting, and one to three XP when killed by the player or tame wolf. If equipped with a chest or saddle, they drop those items as well. And as many and any of the contents of the chest. Fifteen inventory slots are added to the mule when the chest is added. Mules, like mo- like most mobs, can ride in a minecart and boat. Unlike other passive mobs, mules slowly generate regenerate their health. Adult mu- mules can be tamed with an empty hand. Mount the mule repeatedly when it no longer bucks the player and s- and shows hearts. It is tamed, just like a horse. It's quite literally the mix between a horse and a donkey, mm-hmm. which it, it, that's what it is. <laughs> it's in real life. Yeah. And I, I just noticed that you can put them in boats just like, uh, I don't think you can with horses. You cannot put horses in boats. Yeah. So it's kind of like a chess boat. Mm-hmm. So they've been here already. Uh, We had this before. I think donkeys can go in boats. That's right. Yeah. Donkeys can. And they have chess. I wonder if they have the same amount of slots. I didn't really look at that. Because 15 inventory slots is pretty good. Not sure. I know llamas vary. I just didn't know about donkeys. But mules, 15 inventory slots every chest. And that's just it. If you look at bringing back llamas, when I was reading up on mules, it turns out mules in real life are treated a lot like llamas in Minecraft. Mm. And the fact that they have mule trains. Like, that's the way a lot of people still move things across vast distances mules are very good in rocky terrain and hot weather because they have the tougher skin better hold hooves and it's like okay so (laughs) these are like llamas who spawn in rocky areas and when you pull one with the lead you have a llama train so it's really hard to do what i would normally do with a mule which is give it its uh its real life properties but it seems that Minecraft has used the llama to do those properties with. Mm-hmm. So some of the things I want to take from the llamas are mule trains instead of llama trains. But instead of having a mule automatically follow a mule, I want to be able to link them with leads. Leads. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, that'd be cool. That alone allows you to link two ends of a lead to something that you're not holding which is something you can't do in minecraft right now so i think that would be a huge thing yeah i say this but like you could do animals to fence posts but you guys get what i'm saying i get what you mean yeah another thing is like anytime you look up for a a picture of a mule they all have like colorful saddles like the llamas Hmm. so i think the armor slot for a mule should be carpet Okay. Yeah, because as of right now, they don't, you can't put armor on them. That's one thing I left out. So, yeah, that putting on some kind of, yeah, something to di- differentiate the mules, because all, all mules are similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to tell them apart would be a lot easier. And uh, the other thing is, a mule can do a sideways kick. So, I thought that'd be a cool defense mechanism if something were to hit the mule 
Like you have llamas that spit. Maybe the mule kicks. Does like a roundhouse. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that'd be. But I mean, that's kind of all I had for mules. It kind of felt like the llama stole a lot of the tricks the mule can do. But I feel a lot of it could carry over. And I know Mojang's not big on having multiple things do the same thing. Kind of feels like a mule could maybe be a uh, exception. The only thing I'm worried about is the 15 slot inventory because getting a llama that has 15 slots is kind of hard. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't know there were mules in the game for a while. Yeah, I thought they were just donkeys and horses. I think it was a few years after I was playing, I was like, I didn't even know those existed. Pretty cool. You know, I mean, I just mentioned, you know, they don't spawn naturally, so you have to breed them. I've never done that. Never bred a mule. Have you? Nope. Hmm. I don't think I've bred a horse. No, I've bred a horse. I'm telling you, I mean, ever since Elytra came, I don't, I don't see the point. Yeah. yeah, unless they add something new to the horse, Elytra's where it's at. Or another way of travel. I think that's an, another topic, though, for another day. But let us know in the comments if you guys ever bred a mule or had a mule. If it's very helpful. Be nice to know. Yeah, I should have done that this season since we're so close to each other. Having roads and horse travel would have made sense. Yeah, yeah, we should probably build a road. But then again, we fly. I know uh, Croc was doing that for a while. Yeah, we just, I think it's like one rocket. We can get to each other's base. Yeah. Usually. Pretty much. Okay, so we can now go back to the, the listener comment from earlier, because our main topic is the way too early 120 prediction. Mm -hmm. And I'm predicting more biome updates. Oh, that's what I predicted last time. I think Mojang's heard everyone loud and clear that the wild update was not so wild. So I think we're going to get one or two more biome updates. Yeah, just one or two. But I think we're going to get like ambient mobs. We're going to get things like, I don't know, owls or something that hoot at night. Hmm. For the preferred biome. Correct. I really would like us to get the fireflies. Yeah, me too. Because I don't think we're I don't think we're not getting them because of the frog thing. I think we're not getting them because it didn't work correctly and the frog thing's just an excuse. I think fireflies would fit well in forest too. I do too. Like they it's a very good like you said ambient mob. It really ups your experience in the atmosphere. Mhm. Mm Stuff like squirrel, uh, another kind of bear, whether it be a brown bear, black bear, stuff like that. So somewhat of a mob overhaul too. Kind of. Like now we're going to get different kinds of dogs, mm. which is something we've been asking for since we got several different versions of cats. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, why, why are dogs not getting love? Mm -hmm. What the heck? Yeah, we love dogs. <laughs> we have dogs. Yeah, but that's my go. Now... Would this kind of update appease me? No, not really. <laughs> Inventory update is one of those things I think we need more than anything. I would love an ambience update. Like, I really would. Having several different kinds of mobs, a couple biome updates would be great. And like I said, I think the wild update is a good update. It's not for me, but the mangrove swamps, I'm really excited to explore those and how they look. So getting more biome fixes, whether it be birch, which we've seen some concept art, maybe it's a savanna gets done, maybe it's the plains biome, that stuff, it would interest the heck out of me. But I just feel we need an inventory update. And I have to take back what I said could fix it with the hot bar swapping. Since I tried hot bar swapping for about a week, it actually took me longer to get to the correct block I wanted than before. And I had to stop and I had to think about what I was doing. It, it was like playing a whole new game. And mentally, it just didn't feel natural. Granted, over time, maybe it would. But I don't know. So I don't know what you could do to fix the inventory. But I think a bio update with some mobs, mobs being the focus, is the next update. So biome update, that's uh, looking like a wild update part two then. Yep. That's funny. So yeah, that's pretty much what the question we got. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I know, right? 
someone would ask the question to my topic. Nothing about fossils, though? I don't think we're going to get archaeology update for a while. Okay. I've never seen Mojang put anything on the back burner, and it come back in a relatively quick manner. That's good. That's good point. So. I can definitely see inventory. You mentioned inventory. It being a part of an update. You know, a small part of an update. Helpful, but... It really needs to be included in an update. I don't think it can be the entire update. Right. Okay. Well, I mentioned before what I thought the next update is going to be, and uh, I feel like we're going to get a new dimension. Yeah. We're going to we're going to see what's in this portal. If we're not getting it this update, it's going to be next update after next update. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what's going to be in there. You know, I can only speculate what's going to be in there. We might have more wardens in there. We might not. Maybe the warden is protecting this other dimension. But there's going to be something in there. And hopefully that game changer. Yeah, there's some really cool things about the ancient cities that you can get there. But nothing, I don't know, not no holy cow game changer. Like, you want to find a stronghold to get to the end. Because that's a game changer right there. To get to the ancient city, you pretty much you're getting this compass or the skulk. You know, the the skulk's pretty cool. But then again, other deep darks, you can acquire that. So ancient city, I feel like is going to have this portal in there and uh, a new dimension. Now, it could could have other stuff involved in the update. Like, I like the idea of archaeology pointing you to the ancient city. True. Yeah, you know, once you find an archaeology site. That would be cool. Yeah, and, and because it was supposed to come out during this whole Deep Dark update, I thought they were connected somehow, so we might get that as well. If you if you think about it, let's say you take out mangrove swamps, mm-hmm. and, and people need to remember mangrove swamps are my favorite part of this update, so this is a big thing. If you were to take that out and then replace it with the archaeology part, maybe add a little bit more to it, it would have made perfect sense to have archaeology and the deep dark in the same update, or at least ancient cities. Yeah. Yeah. As of right now, it was kind of archaeology was kind of just a thing on its own. It didn't really point to anything. It was kind of just a thing where you explored. Mm-hmm. But I'm hoping it has something to do. I'm not sure, but it has, might have something to do with finding your way to the ancient city. Because as of right now, there's no way to find your way there you just gotta hope you run into it and they're pretty scarce so if there's going to be a portal to another dimension you're going to want to find your way there or have something pointing you there Hmm. yeah that that was a good point i totally forgot about archaeology being able to do something like that Mm -hmm. dig up the past type of deal i do like the idea of more biome being updated though Hmm. like a lot of people were talking about the desert how scarce it is, which uh, that also brings you to the end. You know, the end's pretty scarce, and it hasn't been touched in a while. But the desert, there's just, there's really nothing to it. Well, and that's just it. Like, I hear that a lot, but I feel like deserts are supposed to be <laughs> scarce. Right. It's a desert. That's true. Um, that being said, I think you could do, I, I, like, you could do smaller biomes inside the desert biome, kind of like how we have bamboo jungle and mangrove swamp you could do something like the the obvious ones in oasis Mm -hmm. the jungle oasis biome that would be a really cool small biome another one could be desert dunes where it's a bunch of really rolly hills done with sand yeah have like mini biomes inside yeah doesn't have to be structures or exactly anything like that like maybe have some camels walking around give it a little more life Oh, camels would be awesome. Yeah. I was also going to say snakes, but... No, 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 no. <laughs> I've had enough of those already. I figured you'd say that. But they're they're in the desert. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, then you have scorpions. There's a lot of bad things out there, too. Could you imagine, with the size of spiders in Minecraft, what a scorpion would be like in Minecraft? I'll be like that mummy movie. Well, the Scorpion King. Yep. Bad CGI and all. I could see it being a boss mob. Yeah, I could see that. A giant scorpion. Scorpions always freak me out because they have poison in them. Yeah, you know, they got they got claws and they got a little a tail that could spear you. Mm-hmm. 
so many options they have. But you're thinking biomes. I'm thinking new dimension. Both sound pretty exciting. Well, I don't think mine sounds super exciting. I think mine feels logical in the progression that the game's going. I don't see Mojang adding a new dimension until they feel all the other ones are up to snuff. Right. Matter of fact, I think I've heard Mojang say this, like say the exact same thing I'm saying now. But maybe they think the overworld is, it's there, so it's ready for the update um, with a with a new dimension. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you, you would like to give more love to the things that's been there for a while, you know, to make them better before giving us something that brand new. Like a, a dimension's a big deal, pretty big deal. Be nice to, I mean, and I could see it, you know, it's going to be hard to get to, it's going to be difficult. So maybe put some more love into what people see more, like the overworld, the exploration. I'd be, I mean, like I said before, I'd be okay with a biome update, mm-hmm. even new structures. I'd be cool with that. Yeah, I could see overhauling structures in general, like the jungle temple, desert temple, maybe guardian temple. Mm-hmm. Maybe not so much changing how the structures themselves work, but the way they look, the loot's inside, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, as of right now, we have like three different temples. Could they add more temples? Because you got the ocean monument. It's pretty much a temple. Then you got the jungle temple, desert temple. I wonder if they could add more of those. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Just a thought. But we do have a... Carl had a vote on Spotify. Should we mention that before we... Yeah. He mentioned, will you be updating to the wild update? Asking the audience. And we had, hold on, let me see if I can read this. Let me get a little closer. 79% said, yes, as soon as it comes out. 9% said, yes, but going to wait a few days or weeks to see about the bugs. Another 9% said, no, I'm inter- I'm not interested in it. Wonder, you, wonder who said that. And uh, 3%, which I think is one vote, said, no, my platform slash server slash world can't be updated. Looks like a lot of people are going to be updating to the wild update. <laughs> as soon as it comes out. As soon as it comes out. I'm sure everyone, well, not everyone, but most people are going to play with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, I think we're waiting a bit. Mm-hmm. We're not in any rush. Right. Like I can imagine a lot of people are going to update immediately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's times where we updated too fast. Oh, yeah. We have ran into some issues. So we, we're trying to avoid that. And as content creators, it's nice to have, you know, third-party services to help make sure they're up to date as well. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into content creation. So y- you need everything to be on the same page to have the freedom to make videos the way you want them to. Mm-hmm. So it's like losing replay mod doesn't sound like a lot until like, I go back to my last episode, which I felt didn't have a lot of replay mod footage in it. And then you realize there, there's quite a bit. Of, just in the first two minutes, that entire thing is done in replay mod. It's like five or six clips. Yeah, like quick. Not to mention I have a time lapse where I build a pond in the middle of it. Jumbo, we lost you again, my friend. I kind of think we should probably go ahead and run over to the post show before anything else happens. I, I know this will make a, another kind of short episode. But I'm using the justification of me still being sick and Jimbo's computer's obviously on the fritz. But uh, before I have Jimbo read us out, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons for supporting our show. Our milk level patrons are Arrington, Omni, Croc, Fragile Rock, KC Plays Games, and Viper Tuna. If you too would like to get access to exclusive benefits and hours of extra content each month, please consider joining at patreon.com slash the withering effect. And if you like the show or hearing me speak, you can share it with all of your friends and on social media. If you listen on Spotify, rate and follow us so you never miss a future episode. Or if you listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a nice review. Doing any of these really helps the show reach more listeners. If you'd like to get in contact with us, send an email to podcast at thewitheringeffect.com. Tweet us, leave a voice message, or join our Discord where, where you can have a chat with everyone who works on the show and fellow listeners. All the links are in the show notes. This show has been brought to you by Jimbo and myself, but also our digital producer, Carl. He helps to make sure the show ends up where it should be. And the amazing music you hear in the intro and outro is created by the one and only Decoy. Everyone's social media info can be found in the show notes. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for getting with us. You should probably go drink your milk now. Bye. See you guys.